Hello and welcome to The Nines presented by AT&T, the show that should be nominated at eSports Awards. Why isn't it? So go out there and nominate us. I'm your host, Rodan. And I'm one of your other hosts, Crumbs. You might know me from my work as an analyst for the League of Legends LCS Ex-Oid broadcast. Ex-Oid Watch League analyst as well. Come on, that's right, that that's up, right. Bro. There's been a few other things. <laughs> so and if you don't know, now you know. And I'm your third host, Uber. Here on The Nines, we all do the heavy lifting earlier in the day. We tape some high quality esports content and then we sit back and we watch it live with you. That's exactly what we're doing here. And it's also Amazon Prime Day. Did you guys get anything? Oh God, bro, Unnecessarily, I bought, yeah. of course. I, I looked at something. It was one of those in how in your kitchen garden that you put on your little sink where you can like grow tomatoes from your own <laughs> kitchen. You mean, a, you mean a plant? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was like a plant. Do you have too much time with your hands? <laughs> I do. I really do. Uh, I, you know, actually, I'm almost as sad. I brought moving boxes. I have to move oh, them. That's right, you're moving. Moving, yeah, it's great because it's downstairs in the same complex because God help me trying to move across this city. LA is a nightmare for that. Yeah, oh, good luck with that. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys are excited because today we have a wonderful Show for That's you. right. On today's show, we have League uh, Legends Pro Sneaky from Cloud9 in the studio. Sneaky, you excited to be here? He is ecstatic. Brilliant. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> are, we are super stoked to have you here as well. We'll be talking to him later at the end of our show. He's going to rate how we've cosplayed in the past. Oh, God, I'm scared. And we'll also be talking to Cloud9 M's about streaming and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And, of course, we'll be showing you the best of the best plays and clips in our stream of the crop. Oh, and it's my, my turn again. Do it again. And now yeah. let's toss it over to my Two in a row. <laughs> First on headlines, they keep hiring me back. I don't know why. <laughs> Nine. Welcome to the Channel 9 News. A lot happened this last week, so let's get right to it. First up, Cloud9's new CSGO roster made their debut this past weekend at Blast Pro Series in sunny Los Angeles. There were low expectations for automatic daps, tens, and the boys, but they showed up and showed off. They even qualified for Sunday's playoffs, but lost in the semifinals to the best squad in the world, Team Liquid. Not a bad debut, and their amazing work even netted them a ridiculous plus 281 in the current CSGO World Rankings, pushing them up to 20th place. Uber, did you even think this was possible given the short time frame and they've only been together for a couple weeks? Well, in all fairness, uh, the ranking starts very low if it's a new team, right? Uh, so it's not too hard to climb up when you're at this tournament. But to be honest, like this team is, is very experienced. Like, you have Daps, Kusta, Mixwell, Automatic, Tens. A lot of these players have been around for quite some time. So, uh, you know, getting as far as they did is definitely impressive because no one had expectations for them. It's a question of now seeing what happens now. All right, now, uh, Mitch, I do want to say that Tens, you know, even though he has experience, he's still kind of the new guy on the block. Yeah, I mean, look, he's, I, I, I did say, like, most of the players are experienced on this team, but it's worth pointing out that Tens, in terms of his professional Counter-Strike experience, this is pretty new for him. A young star coming out of Canada. His teammates, though, he's built around a very solid core of, uh, of very experienced, you know, North American Counter-Strike players. So there's a lot of hype around Tens because he's already showing up as being a potential prospect. So you have to feel good as a C9 fan to see his young blood yeah. in the roster. I, I don't care how many veterans you get. The fact that you've been together for two weeks mm-hmm. and you're already doing so well is unbelievable. Right, and then they lost Team Liquid, who is just, like, I think they set a new record, right? Like 18 wins They're in a row at LAN. everywhere. They're winning everything. Yeah. yeah, so nothing to be ashamed of in the apps. That team is really exciting to watch moving forward. Let's go ahead and check back in with the news, shall we? Well, they do have expectations on their shoulders, how they respond to that. Right, I mean, everyone knows that they have the skills, but that they have the chemistry to be able to ride, and I think they did fairly well. Yeah, it's gonna be a long-term thing for them, but it's a great start. Mm -hmm. Next up, though, it was a wild weekend for League of Legends in North America. There were some upsets and comebacks, and Cloud9 was part of both on Saturday. Cloud9 faced last place Echo Fox and lost in the longest match of the summer split. We'll ask Sneaky later on, but Crumbs, we've got you here, so why not? Did Cloud9 just play down to their opposition, or do you feel like Echo Fox really rose to this game? There was a lot that happened here. Cloud9 was tied for first place before this match, and they had an injury in the top lane, mm-hmm. so Licorice had to be subbed out for Kumo. Yep. And then they subbed out Sven Skarin, the main jungler, for the academy jungler already. So from the get-go, it was a different C9. 
To top things off, they were running experiments. So they let one of the newest champions, Yumi, go through. Echo Fox got their hands on it and just ran over the game with it. The support did more damage than our boy Niski in the mid lane, who had like 1,200 AP <laughs> on Vagar. Makes no sense, but that's what happened. New champions got released, and I'm sure that Cloud9 has learned their lesson. Right, yeah, Yumi hitting harder than a, a six rabbit on Vagar. Yeah. You hate <laughs> yeah. to see it. And then on Sunday, Cloud9 continued their downward trend and were en route to losing to rivals Team Solo mid. At 23 minutes in, Cloud9 was down 8 kills and almost 8,000 gold when inexplicably they managed to mount a comeback. Crumbs, what was going through your mind when you watched this match, this huge comeback as it happened? So I actually got to watch this game with the Academy mid laners of, of Cloud9 and TSM and they both said, Cloud9 should not have won this game. TSM <laughs> threw so hard and they had a big lead. So this was super reminiscent of their victory in spring where TSM got a very early lead and then just fumbled play after play. Cloud9 finds a comeback and a lot of it came from one player every single time. Sven Skarin, he finds a comeback, plays against TSM. He was a former player of TSM, coincidence? Oh, Maybe, knows. so he knows how He's to get to it. He's the inside guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of being on the inside, this past weekend was stage three for the playoffs of the Overwatch League, and where the best of seven finals saw the Shock, who had made it to every single stage final so far, take on the Dragons, who were winless last season. That's right, those Shanghai Dragons. Shanghai won the first three games, then Shock countered with three wins of their own. The resilient Shanghai Dragons team continued their Cinderella story and were victorious, becoming the Stage 3 champions. Having defeated the Stage 2 champion San Francisco Shock and the Stage 1 champion Vancouver Titans, Uber, can we actually say the Shanghai Dragons are the team to beat <laughs> to close out the year? What madness is that? I mean, it was a really good run for them, I think, through this tournament. A couple of caveats, I think, in that series. Uh, not to take anything away from the Dragons, because I love them as much as anyone else. Uh, the Shock came out of the gates with like three bench players I hadn't played since February. In map one of that best of seven semi-final, and obviously didn't go their way. Things kind of got out of their control after a while. They weren't able to deal with the Sombra and the Farah. Right now, yeah, I think they're going to be causing the most problems to teams that like to play that traditional style, that like to play around tanks more. Uh, Ding is the best Farah in the world, uh, I would say, and uh, his Sombra also is no slouch. His team's just got some really nice tech that a lot of other teams aren't able to apply. And while everyone else is busy playing GOATs, playing 3-3, they were out there mixing it up and getting wins, so... Nothing but respect for that team. I'm glad to hear D is still a beast. Uh, D is uh, <laughs> sat on the bench right now. He's straight chilling. He and Gregory are playing patty cake. Well, oh! <laughs> yeah. Now, hopefully they'll get their shot, okay. but uh, DM is uh, it's taking over the hit scan spot and is a ferociously good uh, Widowmaker player. Well, that's scary for the future. Yeah. That's how they are now. But uh, speaking of the future, plans for the 2020 Overwatch League also were unveiled today. The homecoming model will be used throughout the year as matches will be taking to venues across the globe with each team hosting at least two homestands. There will be no additional city-based franchises added to the league and the conferences will be split into four divisions of Atlantic North and South plus Pacific East and West. Uber, I know you're a big part of that program. You've been cast for a long time. What makes you the most excited about today's announcement? I just think this gets us, uh, Dan, a big step towards our initial vision. This was supposed to be a global league with city-based teams. And this, this is finally going to be that. Like we, we've already seen that. Our events in Dallas and Atlanta have proven that this homestand model brings crowds, it brings hype, it creates great memories and really drives home some really important stories. Uh, I mean, you know, live events for Overwatch are fantastic. Now that we get them, you know, potentially every weekend or, or however much is, is very exciting. And I'm going to get them frequent flyer miles because, you know, your boy, <laughs> jet setting. Economy plus. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. No, you think you, I ain't no caboose boy. I ain't sitting <laughs> in that coach fam. You listening there, Blizzard? Yo, yo, PV. Hook me up. <laughs> Moving along, though. Uh, last week was the ESPYs, ESPN's annual awards a sports awards show. The red carpet was graced by a couple of the biggest names in competitive video gaming, Ninja and Dr. Disrespect. And this time, uh, for the first time ever this year, there was an esports category, best esports moment. Mm. Cloud9 CSGO major winner Boston was nominated, but unfortunately did not win, rigged. Crumbs, is this adoption though of esports into mainstream sports a trend that will keep growing? Or is this a feeble attempt at trying to you know, get a hold of this like, this younger 18 to 35 demographic? I think it's both, actually, because it starts from both the demographic watches 
the ESPN, they watch streams, so the audience is the same. So it's just a matter of, well, they already like basketball, so why not add the category of esports? And it's going to continue to happen, but it's going to take a long time for us to get to a point where the likes of Disrespect and Ninja are at the same level as an actual competitive athlete that has tried and tested competition because that's the element that's missing from all those guys there. They're not the actual players. They're the streamers. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're the personalities that they're not... <laughs> Look, they are competitors, I'll be honest with you, but uh, it's a little bit of a gray area between those two. We can argue that as much as we like, but I don't have time for it now. Okay, don't at me. <laughs> uh, that, but that wasn't it. That wasn't it, though, for gaming at the ESPYs. The following day, there was the Apex Legends Pro-Am tournament where celebrities and Apex pros played to win money for the Jimmy V Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, my boy Matt Mr. X was, was supposed to play in it, but they took him off the last minute. That's ridiculous. Frodan, what is your take, though, on, on Pro-Ams in general? The model of Pro-Ams in gaming, like in, in Apex and Fortnite as we've seen it. I think it's wonderful. I think part of what makes gaming really special is its accessibility. The fact that almost anybody can play regardless of, you know, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, etc. Uh, there's a lot of boundaries or, or, or borders that are completely broken because yep. of it. So I like Pro-Ams as a way to encourage people to participate without feeling intimidated. I do think it gets a little murky when you start adding insane prize pulls to it, but if they're donating to you know a good cause like charity, I don't think anyone's really upset about this. What I do want to see, though, is when you have actual pros going up against, say, celebrities, I want to see handicaps. I want to see something fun, like you're playing with one hand behind your back, or you're playing at some other disadvantage, yeah. because it's always going to be that the pro, yeah. obviously, Would is Would you not than say that a pro on a team with a celebrity is a handicap in itself? Not saying that Celebrities are going to be bad at games. But well, the other team had to be has to be the same as right. well. Right, right. So that yeah. was the idea, I think, from my understanding. So Matt was supposed to play in it. It was that it was going to be uh, like a, a streamer, a celebrity, and, and, a, and a sort of gaming influencer, gaming sort of pro kind of thing. Right. But I, it's murky. Like we yeah, look you at can have a streamer that's like, oh, he's Shroud against right. I don't know dis disrespect, and Shroud has better aim, so it's going to be making things easier. Doc fans won't like yeah. to hear that, but <laughs> true, it's kind true. Of true. It's kind of true. Finally, let's keep talking about gaming for charity because, well, that's the best type of gaming. A young streamer by the name of Zill has received viral attention for streaming to raise money for his father, who has stage four cancer. He has raised over 20,000 US dollars through donations while streaming, which is amazing, right? Well, of course, no deed can go unpunished. Unfortunately, with this attention, he had to endure some bullying. Rebuff claims that his dad is faking it and explained that what they're gonna go doing with the money since he lives in Canada, and there's a healthcare system that does pay for some medical costs. All that being said, best luck to Zill and his father and his family and everybody who has to read those comments because it's not easy to go through no matter what side you're on. Guys raising money for his dad, don't really see what right? the issue is, but... It's not like he chose how much money he needed and wanted to get, right? right? He's just sitting there like, okay, 20K, like, this is how much I need to spend. Internet, classic. Yeah. Say classy, fam. There's not much for us to say about that, but that's it for us on this Channel 9 News. Let's go back live on the couch. All right, so uh, those are all the pieces of news for Channel 9. Uh, do we miss anything, Mitch, that you think? Uh, well, I mean, just recently we passed the, the, the 2018 in, uh, international in terms of prize pool already for the 2019 one. So it's, right. it's up to like 29 million. And look, as an avid Dota Underlords player, you've never played Dota. <laughs> the same exact I'm thing, very excited about yeah. this. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see the uh, the invitational battle pass in, in Underlords. That's going to be lit. T <laughs> Next TI, we're going to have an Underlords section. A little bit, just shave off some of that. I I want to watch, yeah. I for watch people play against OpenAI in Underlords. <laughs> I mean, we're sick. still waiting for the Artifact International. For oh, one Artifact still <laughs> exists? Let's not get ahead yeah, of ourselves. That hasn't been canned. There were like 40 people <laughs> playing that, man. I mean, there's, on, there's still, you know, the dozens of us. Uh, there are dozens of us. Overwatch <laughs> Summer Games is out, by the way. Our, our weekly uh, sort of event in Overwatch. We where you it's so based... much Overwatch news. Isn't yeah, that yeah, just no, just people, so people in chat are trying to leave because Overwatch. I'm here. I want to give... It is best Lucio Ball as well. I, I want to oh, give a that, that big yeah. shout out to the Evo and the fighting game community because uh, they set a new record for Smash Bros. Entrance with Smash Bros. Ultimate. Big shout out to them. I'm uh, obviously a huge proponent of FGC. I'm going to try to make it out to Evo myself and get uh, completely bodied in pools. I signed up for Dragon Ball and I signed up for uh, Smash Bros. Oh, Tekken. Ooh. Yeah, that's it. I, 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 you know, honestly, I'm a complete muggle when it comes to, to Smash, but I love watching Evo. It's, it's going to be great. Favorite events of the year. Very easy to see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, very, very hype. Really looking forward to it. Anyways, moving up to uh, number eight on the countdown, it's Click Debate. This is Click Debate, sponsored by Puma. 
An article recently posted by Talk Esport reported that a 14-year-old Fortnite player named Crims has dropped out of school to pursue professional gaming and this move is being supported by his father. This question of go pro or play it safe or stay in school is asked all the time in conventional sports, but does it make sense for gamers? That's what we're asking Frodan and Crumbs today. But before we jump in, if you'd like to upgrade your wardrobe with some Puma swag, let us know in the chat who you think won the debate afterwards with the hashtag click debate and their names. One randomly selected winner will receive a Puma gift card. And sorry, but you must be 18 years or older and live in North America to win. So you've shown some skill, you've worked your way up the ladder, you've been at some events, you're building up a stream. At what point can you sort of say, I'm going to drop school and I'm going to pursue this this gaming thing full time? Well, I think that school is really important, not necessarily just for the education that you get, but also because of these social experiences. I'm gonna be very real right now. I think esports has done a lot of great deal for the youth, but they've also are starting to raise a generation of man children uh, or you know people who are not responsible adults. And I think a large part of it is because they don't understand what it's like to conduct themselves in social settings. They get their first girlfriend or boyfriend forever for the first time, and they don't really know how to conduct themselves. And that's why we have a bunch of amateur hours or drama that happens, or things that are just falling out that if they were properly understanding how to deal with this, if they were going through those school settings, I think that's a very beneficial. So I do think that there's a ton to be gained just by staying in school, even if it's not just so you can learn your Dewey Decimal System. Well, I think that the only thing you should focus on completing is your high school education because beyond it, you're going to be indebted before you even understand (laughs) what money is. You have no concept for money. Oh, you have $40,000. Yeah, I'll sign up for this degree that I have no idea what the real world actually entails. I learned nothing from my university education. I know a ton of people that haven't. I think that life itself offers you way more. Now, the fact that you're 14 and your dad is saying, you know what, drop out of high school is a little worrying for me because at least there, you go through puberty in a more controlled environment. To go through those stages when you're trying to say, I've already decided my career is a little bit too much. You don't even know yourself. How can you then say, I'm going to commit to being a streamer full time? Two years later, you might decide you wanted to be a pro soccer player the whole life and you got to go back to school to figure it out so high school at the very least university right now way too expensive you don't need a lot and new schools are coming out that actually fight that debt problem and teach you better things that are more relatable to real life because i really <laughs> so, in what world do we go back to school because we want to be a soccer pro? <laughs> I, I get like, your point, but... Yeah, I was thinking, like, where is organized soccer? It's like, uh, after hours in school, it's easy in school. And yeah. for those who don't know, yes, this is a Jedi robe that does come with sets of powers. Mostly in compliments, actually. <laughs> You're going to full strike me, daddy? <laughs> Only after the cameras. Are on. <laughs> it's a great after. outfit. But where's you need like you need to have a lightsaber though. Like what's going on? Oh, you don't want to see my lightsaber. Okay, fair enough. Well, I tried. He 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 he, t- he put it down there. That's, I can't do much about that. Well, I'm glad you thought. I'm glad you thought about your argument a little bit more than your outfit at least. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get back to the debate here. Debate. I really don't know what I've learned from there besides just knowing how to deal with people. It differs from country to country. In Australia, uh, we do have university debt, but a lot of the courses are subsidised by the government based on skill shortages yeah. that currently exist. Uh, so obviously, I went to uni, finished my degree. There is a there is a small debt there that's being paid off. What is that off. degree? Uh, aeronautical engineering. Oh, you where are, where are the it? ships and the <laughs> spacecraft? That's right. I'm about to blast you <laughs> off in one. Like, no, it's, it's true. So I got that degree, but. I, did, I didn't get a job from it, or I did, and I just decided I didn't like it as much as esports, I think. Uh, it really taught me how to learn, work inside a team and to work with people that d- weren't the same as me, right? That that dealt with things differently. Maybe they're more, you know, emotional or maybe they're more logical or try to make sure I keep a team of people happy around me. So. Yeah, I, I do think that it's a really good point to make that it's a systemic problem. We don't really have good junior divisions or like some kind of amateur league for people to build themselves up in mainstream sports, which for some reason we keep comparing ourselves to with this industry. Uh, they have have little league or like junior divisions people sure. can learn the importance of things like teamwork and cooperation listening to your coach yes listening to your coach and i feel like a lot of times we're thrusting these young kids into the spotlight and we're raising the next generation of you know disney kids of people who get too much spotlight but i do right? think that is the play though you got to put them in those situations it doesn't mean you take them out 
100% of high school, it means why not do three semesters on a team or learn something else? Volunteer experience is a lot more effective for figuring out if that's what you want to do, if your employer even wants to hire you. So I think that shifting away the education towards a more integrated process with multiple facilities, not just esports, but whatever other things people want to pursue during high school, after high school, will not only make happier employers, people that want to actually do the jobs that they're doing will be there because they got to try it out first. You don't just go to the ice cream shop and say, give me only chocolate. You try a few before you figure out that that is the flavor you wanted. It seems like we've meandered to a pretty similar point from different directions. Ultimately, we don't want to produce a community of socially maladjusted individuals. We do want to encourage people to sort of try new things and, and follow their dreams, but ultimately, stay in school, kids. Be responsible. High school yes. only. So that's it for Click Debate. Thank you. Uh, sponsored by Puma again. Let us know in the chat who you thought won. I, I guess I did. I weighed in there. Uh, for a chance to win a gift card so you can use on some sweet Puma gear like their jackets. Look at this jacket. Isn't it flame? I don't even know what color that is. I couldn't tell you. It's just fire. It's just flame. Isn't this sick? It's dope and it's like light. Look at this. This is... This is does that have anything in the back? It has a, sh a thingy in the back. I don't even know why. Look at me. Look at me. This is my Michael Jackson jacket. <laughs> Got a zipper here for no reason. I'm just killing the game. Look at the inside. It's just poom. I'm just pooming out of my mind. This jacket's $400, and I have no idea why. But it is really comfy. Shout out to Mango and Mango Nation. Love uh, it. Mango placed fourth at low tier city seven this past weekend in Smash Bros. Melee. Although I loved his excuse for why, he, once again, he was stopped by Hungry Box, where he said, uh, quote, I had too much sex this past week. <laughs> no wonder I lost. <laughs> to which I was like, huh, that's a... Uh, that's why we love the FPC. Unreal. The <laughs> Unreal respect, bro. That's all I got to say. I hit the like button immediately. <laughs> All right, well, Uber, if you could go back and do it all over again, schooling-wise, after this debate, would you? Why not? I mean, like, I well, really? I, I graduated school at 17. I finished uni at 21. I had ages. Like, I I had ages after that to decide what I wanted to do. I could come out with a degree, you know. I didn't use it, but hey, I know how to make rockets, so it's kind of cool. It taught me how to, like, like I said in the thing, it taught me how to, like, work with different people, right? I think, like, just to understand that not everyone is neurotic and is over the top and uh, obnoxious as I am, so... It definitely helps. <laughs> well, uh, here's some people who aren't obnoxious. They're very lovely. It's the Twitch chat, so we're going to check lie. in. Yep, that's definitely, see what you definitely guys just are fan saying. service. Uh, seems like we have some sneaky fans in the chat, do we now? What? Uh, fans <laughs> of his gameplay or of his costume? Ah, uh, well. Yes. ¿Por qué no los dos? Hmm? Why not? That's right. It seems like uh, it was actually split down the middle for a while, Kronos, but the very I end... I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. I think you got blown out by him at the end, though. Yeah. Well, I think it was the same people trying to reaffirm their vote. Oh. But for the most part, I think it was uh, mainly split down the middle. And I think it's largely because we agreed about, like, 80% of our, our yeah. argument, and then, like, last, like, 20%... Uh, who would have thought it. two reasonable yeah. young men would come to the same conclusion <laughs> on a topic like that? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, anyways... Dude, the the uh, dad, that's the thing that blew me. Like, the dad is the one oh, who's yeah, like, hey, the one pushing the hey, all right, son, I'll back... Like, you but know, you wonder if it's like because he's trying to make support. that mad Skrilla or if he's just like, son, I want you to do what makes you happy. I, I, my parents would not have let me do that, though. I don't... Like, even no if chance. even if it was lucrative, potentially for them, they just... We were like middle class. We weren't rich. We you know, we were just getting by. But they still wouldn't have been like, yeah, go go and do this, I don't think. It's okay, man. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> now it's time to check in with our chief meteorologist, Mitch Oh, Gruber. this guy's hot. I like this guy. It is his. Seven. Hello, I'm your chief meteorologist, Mitch Gruber. Let's see what's bubbling up in the social sphere this week. First up, face filters are a staple of social media. A new one has its day in the sun every few <laughs> months. <laughs> this is attached to you. 
That's it's, you. That's me. Is that you, fam? Yes, She's that's hot. me. I am a strong, confident, right. beautiful, hot. male posing as an Asian female. 2019, I guess. And currently, the new hotness is the old filter on FaceApp, and it's taken the Instagram... I, I want right. to say something. Is oh, that please. You missed up my you. follow-up tweet, which is, uh, after I did say my DMs were open after using the gender swap uh, filter, I got some really weird yeah. and creepy DMs. Yeah. And I said in the follow-up tweet that some of y'all need Jesus. Because the truth <laughs> is, there are some really weird, creepy stuff. And also one thing that in the news was that there was this Bianca incident, too. It's like, please, can we just conduct ourselves like human beings? And Sorry, what is the incident? There was, uh, there was a young gamer, I think 17 years old, where I think she was like chased down and, and unfortunately brutally murdered by someone in her Discord and was jealous over her playing video games with someone else. Yeah, it's like when it goes to uh, online connection, okay, it kind yeah. of goes too far. Not going to well, spend too much time. I want to focus it. back on the fact that you make a great girl. Thank you. You look better Thank than you. a lot of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look a lot better than my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> so. Great, you guys should hang it up the show. Let's text after. Uh, In the meantime, <laughs> let's get back to the meteorologist. And by storm, everyone's doing it, even the League of Legends eSports Twitter account. Here are some of League's popular players <laughs> as octogenarians. <laughs> Kabashad looks Amish. That's fantastic. And here are some of our own LCS Cloud9 team. Who's that one? Quick guess. Uh, licorice? You got it. It's the forehead though, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if you it out. Who's this one? This it's, is it's Reaper. <laughs> it's, it's the coach. <laughs> Oh, that's an easy one. Ah, uh, yeah. That's Damn. clearly lemonation. <laughs> Currently, that's gotta be Niski, right? Yeah, you yeah. can tell by the 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 everything. <laughs> that, the, the everything. Woo, yeah. What filter is this? One of the top comments here was from Potatoes is Potatoes and said, the third grandpa used to be like this. Wow. Yeah, true, true enough. Uh, life comes at you fast, I guess. <laughs> Reminder though, Sneaky will be on the show later. Crumbs, have you ever used a face filter? Throw down, I know your answer. I used the old one today, loved it. Loved I looked it. like Sean Connery plus my dad. And I used a girl one a while ago, but I really didn't like that one at all. I didn't look like I would be wanting to be with myself, so I took it off. <laughs> no, I look like the soccer mom that brings mimosas wow. to uh, you know soccer on Sunday morning and, and drinks it all herself. Yeah, of course. Uh, but in continuing our conventional sports versus esports theme today, the New Orleans Pelicans of the NBA posted this to their Twitter account, throwing some shade at the Overwatch League. There had been some discontent from NBA fans uh, the other weekend that Overwatch League was on TV rather than the Summer League. Fred and doesn't a post like this though kind of just give esports more credibility? I guess so. They hate us because they ain't us. Yeah. Apparently. They 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 watch people pl play with balls. We play computer games. Not a big difference. Sometimes computerized balls. There you go. Yeah. If you're a Rocket League player, right? Right. Of course, I had to weigh in this because I can't help myself. Uh, Monty, meet sports mad that they're slowly losing relevance. Relevancy. Enjoy the inevitable march. Okay, see, so I'm just meat I'm sports. Just, yeah, <laughs> meat I mean, sports. Monty's like going in. He's like, the, he's trying to be a harbinger of change here. I'm just kind of memeing on them. Please think about the boomers. Won't somebody keep them in mind? Mm, such a shame. <sighs> anyway, have you guys heard about this one? The Area 51 raid on a Facebook event has been set up to storm the site of Area 51 <laughs> at Nellis Air Force Base on September 20th to see them aliens because they, quote, can't stop all of us. Now, you'd be surprised. Uh, this playful event post has inspired a metric ton of memes. There's actually, oh, yeah. look at the people going and interested, by the way. Here you go. I was nervous about the Area 51 <laughs> event at first. Then I remember the training we'd received. Oh, yeah. How I'm pulling up to Area <laughs> 1. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but that accurate, last one is accurate. A bit Upgrades. Fake. Yeah, I don't, mm, I don't know. Uh, it should be noted that uh, the Air Force has publicly advised all the people uh, that who've said they're going. <laughs> Uh, hey. And the people that said they're interested not to go through with it. Girls um, only want one thing. Those are banshees, <laughs> apparently. And it's, the hate. it's disgusting. <laughs> Who wouldn't want a banshee? I like this one, though. They're not loot boxes. They're surprise mechanics. This interview got me. Uh, and it's not an invasion. It's a field trip. <laughs> it's just a field trip, guys. Uh, all right, so what are your, what's your over and under that people actually turn up to this? So thing? first of all, look at who actually posted. The title of the original poster is Ship Posting This Because I'm Bored As Hell. Mm. <laughs> so No one ever reads I the names. that though. tells you everything. No one ever checks know. the flares for it. In. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure who would win an, an army of a anime avatar weaves <laughs> from the internet or an entire base with military grade <laughs> weapons that are prepared for any kind of invasion. Bro, look at the aerodynamic. Look at look, look, <laughs> yeah. Put me in a wind tunnel now. I I'm telling I can't you, bro. I see you. Where are you, man? Where am I? Where are you? Where am I? 
That's right. Um, the nourishment bar is going to get them through. Do you guys believe in aliens, though, or uh, do you think there are any at Area 51? Do you believe in Antarctica, first of all? Yeah, I mean, the water's <laughs> cold in South Australia, so it, it, it comes from Antarctica, because, yeah, yeah. At this point, I don't know what yeah. to believe. <laughs> are you an alien, Crumbs? Yeah, I, I, have, I, you haven't, I, I, you haven't I've, asked, it out. I've asked myself this question <laughs> multiple times. Anyway, that's it for today's social report. I'm your chief meteorologist, Mitch Gruber. Back to you guys with less cool jackets on the couch. Right. Yes, do you believe in Antarctica? I guess that's a question for you all to answer in Twitch chat for us. If you have any conspiracy theories, Crumbs loves them. Crumbs, let's see the uh, older, uh, the, the filter pick that you took. Bam! There it is. Did that, Look at that. on the big camera. Whoa! Oh, I <laughs> oh. like it. Look at that. It looks like my Uber driver. That's too <laughs> true. You were gonna age really nice. I That's think so. Man. I'm looking. Oh, I've always looked change, forward. Yeah. You get like solid salt and pepper vibes going forward, Dan. Yeah. You're gonna slay it. You're 30s, 40s. You can... Oh yeah, that's when I'll be thinking about slaying at 45. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving along, we have some things that got us a little worked up. That's right. It's time for our loot box yeah. rant at number six. <laughs> go, go. Wait. It is now time to rant on our proverbial loot boxes. Our friend and co-host Monte Cristo normally kicks things off in the segment, and I'd like to continue that tradition, even in his absence, by showing this post of his, where he highlights the necessity of villains in esports. So I'd like to begin by saying that these days, it feels like cancel and outrage culture has slowly seeped its way from chat and the comments to the broadcast desk. I see so many interesting personalities and star talent get muffled because of that fear that they cannot oppose a popular opinion or even criticize a team slash player. Well, here's the thing. Part of competition is that someone's gonna win and someone's gonna lose. Some players are better and some players are worse. And it's not personal, it's just facts. So to all the talent out there, do not be afraid of the backlash from Salty fans. Embrace it. Let it fuel and flow through you. The hate will only make you stronger. If you don't believe me, Monte Cristo, the guy who's supposed to be in this seat ranting in my spot, literally has made his career from it, and no one will argue about what he brings to a broadcast. We don't want watered-down experiences. We want authenticity. It's what makes esports special. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Also, but also, Monty's, he's like subtly telling people not to get mad at esports personalities for being like that. Look, people are going to get mad at you if you're going to be like that, by the way. Suck it up. That's going to be uh, come with the territory as well. It's true. Uh, now, I'd like to talk about something, about recognizing esports personalities like ourselves in events such as esports awards ceremonies. Oh, man. There are so many of them right now. Let's get a look at this one. Of the year, in association with Blinkfire R. Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. We're going to throw back over to Tom and the desk just before we jump into this. Uber. In terms of actually supporting really? the rest of their team by pushing <laughs> up. Is that really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do me like that. <laughs> yeah, do me just like that. Okay. Exact clip again and again <laughs> and again. Oh, we're on. What do you wow. think about How that? How do you feel yeah. right this very moment? That It's got Uber under there, but that's somebody else's face. Yeah. Does it look like, it doesn't look like me, does he? I, like, I had to ask myself, I'm like, do we look this similar? Like, you didn't even wear glasses. Why am I being compared to this buffoon Brennan Hawk on the desk? <laughs> He's not even a caster. Oh, I know, dude. <laughs> I'm like, they gave, they gave it to some intern, but like, hey, if I'm that Australian sounding guy on the Overwatch thing, and we're gonna put his thing in, because people yeah, voted for him. I made the top four, top four. And he mixed me up. Oh, <laughs> no, I already ran about it in the video. I'm not gonna double up, it's just. It's, just... <laughs> it's good, so listen dumb. to one of these things is not like the other, and this is kind of my issue with this entire rant. Every, like last year, it seemed like everyone was trying to make an eSports award show. There were like five, and let's be honest, guys, we know what you're trying to do. It's content. You're trying to sell a show. You're trying to sell something to a sponsor. You're trying to get bums in seats. But you don't care at all, or at least it seems that way, about enshrining the history and celebrating the people in esports. Now, I already had a crack at the esports industry awards about this one. The reason why I'm so disappointed of it is because that was supposed to be the best of the five to 10 award shows that happened in last year. But I can name other ones. Monty and Doyle won an esports caster award at an awards show that I won't name that was on CBS. You know what they got? A what? tweet, no trophy. None of that stuff. They got a tweet no to dinner. commemorate. So, exactly. So how wow. are they going to commemorate this award that they've been supposedly voted for and received? They got a tweet. I'm sure they can frame that one. Guys, if you're really <laughs> interested in, in celebrating the people like us and everyone else in esports, don't make it so obvious you're trying to sell a show. 
For, for God's sake, I mean, you could have done your research. I know me and Brent are both white. That's about all we have in common. Different accent, nationality, hairstyle. Try and at least make it look like you care or know about the people that you're, you're giving awards out to just to get eyes on your product. You might as well all just get together, make one award show that actually will hit the mark mm. for what is you know, sufficient to you know, appreciate the industry and the people that work very, very hard at putting it together. Oh, and by the way, eSports Awards, yeah, if you want me to be there this year, you can fly me. <laughs> you know, if they economy looked, plus. They looked at that clip for ten seconds earlier. They would have seen Bren's tag and would have known it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, was a lower, there would have yeah. been a lower third on that actual clip. It would have come up. At least All try right. to try. I'll tell you what, man. All, All right. right, and now we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. No one's talking about this. It's mobile games, people. I know we're coming from esports, and we're all about PC, but mobile is the future, and it's the thing that's gonna make esports mainstream. Here's why. First of all, most people actually have phones and not computers, making it a lot more accessible. True. If you take a look at the most predominant marketplaces, China right now, ginormous. Most of their gameplay Oh, true. You look at games like PUBG, gameplay, mobile. Overwatch, how many franchises were sold to China just last year? It's, it's like four Chinese spots. League of Legends has way more servers. Mobile will be the way to make the games so much more accessible that then esports competition becomes mainstream. Now, that doesn't mean that PCs is going to go away. It just means that the future that where esports is involved is on mobile, and not a lot of us are going to like it, but that's the reality of it. And if you need some sort of figure to indicate to you how large mobile markets are. Diablo 3 on mobile is all you need to know. Oh, boy. What are you talking about? Are people actually playing that? Yeah, of course they are. Wow. And after, it's making money. After all the backlash they made at BlizzCon when they announced it, they go out and play it. Ah, everyone knew it. that it was basically for the Chinese market because yeah. Diablo 3 is killing it over there. Moolah. That's what companies need to function. That's what wait, wait, Blizzard... wait, wait. Companies want to make money? Yeah. Is that actually well, what's happening? I mean, I want Blizzard to make money so they can pay me more. Oh, that's true. So and they'll, they, they won't fly you. Boys. They won't fly you, though. Well, they'll fly me coach. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll work on that one. All right. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for our loot box rants. Let's hear your thoughts with the gentleman, the very handsome gentleman, back on the couch. All right. You made some good points, Uber. Thank you. I tried. I do want to say that uh, if they did mix you up with someone else, I, for some reason it's not big an outrage, but they mix like crumbs up or even, you know, God forbid myself with like another Asian talent. Can you imagine the controversy <laughs> oh, right. around yeah, yeah, yeah. esports yeah. where they're like, oh, this Asian person, we mix it up with someone else. Why isn't there more outrage about this? Well, you know. It, you we know. know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> we know why. Next, uh, apparently, Uber, what do you have here? Dude, I tablet? look scary. I did an old man. Uh, oh, I did an boy. Old man. Oh, that's me. That's you. That, it's, can can that you see was, it? Can you see it? They shaved your chin and yeah, put yeah, it on. I know, I know. Half of my. I mean, you know what? You my facial hair looks better in, in this one than it does on my you actual face. You look like face. you ride bikes. <laughs> like a bike? Yeah. Yeah. I got, right up on your Harley uh, Davidson. Uh, yeah. That's not a bad got, thing. I think I've got decent hair coverage there. Now, I think there is one of yours, Frodan. I'll, okay, I'll I haven't find seen it. This. I'll, I'll they, find it. They asked me to take a picture during that segment, so I haven't actually seen what I look like old. I'm a little scared. I have honestly. to. I have to put it into uh, into the app. I think so. Oh, okay. But we'll we'll get it sorted out. In just All right. Well, in the meantime, we wanted to check in with chat as well and answer any questions. Uh, a lot of people asking about Sneaky and about Ems. Uh, they are on very very soon. So, uh, I mean, you're pretty much at the show. Ems is going to be uh, coming up in, in just a bit. Yes. So, where's also, Ems? Where's somebody sneaky? somebody did call out some something dumb I said. Oh, what'd you say dumb? Um, well, actually, I guess all three of us are involved in it. Diablo three is not out yet. Yeah, oh, Diablo 3 is On out. mobile, on Diablo mobile. Diablo Immortal. The, yeah, the mobile out. version's yeah, yeah, yeah. not out yet. But yeah. regardless, half the Fortnite player base is actually mobile. So there you go. There you go. Okay. Think about that. All right, well, uh, at number five, we talked to Cloud9's pro player M's in a special Cloud9 spotlight, and then we'll check in to see how I look when I'm mobile. Five. For today's Cloud9 Spotlight, joining us all the way from across the pond in London via the magic of the internet and the power of AT&T is Cloud9 Pro Player Ems. Ems, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Well, glad you're able to join us for the show. Let's jump straight into it. Uh, Cloud9 did a write-up about you recently and in it said that Halo was your entry point for competitive style gaming. Great choice. Uh, what is it yeah. about the game or first-person shooters that made you decide to go down this career path? 
I just really like how intense it can be and it can be really competitive and I'm a sh- extremely competitive when it comes to these type of games. I just always want to win, do better than others and just try and be the best. I love how you have to be careful with what moves you do to survive and you can also just outplay other players, which is a great feeling when you do it. Uh, then when I fell in love with sniping, it was just a big turn because everyone was supporting the videos that I was doing. I just loved doing it and it just drove me to keep doing these type of videos and play these type of games. Yeah, we featured some of your clips even on this show and it was really impressive to all the viewers. Yeah, so we know that you're great at sniping, but it's from your stream and it's one of those places where it's a little harder to find that competitive edge. But what do you enjoy the most about streaming? What I enjoy most about streaming is just interact with my viewers, try and make a space for them where they feel comfortable. Because if I'm having a bad day, they always seem to lift up my mood. So I just want to make them laugh and lift up their mood when they're having a bad day. It's like the greatest feeling ever. I just have this point system on my stream where they can get rewarded if they support my stream a lot. So if you get the most points at the end of the month, I go out my way and send them a prize. And I reset them every month. So it's just fair and everything like that. You're making a whole oh, community, but I'm not going to lie. Watching those They're clips so gives sick. me a better feeling than a lot of other things. <laughs> um, what's it been like, though, to be supported by an organization like Cloud9? Because that must be something that's a dream for so many people. And to have them back you up and say, you know what? You're the content creator we want for our team. Yeah, it's really overwhelming. Like I'm still to this day, I'm still shocked and so honored to be a part of Cloud9. It's just filled with amazing people. They all have the same vision. They're all so supportive. They're just so lovely. I can't wait to meet them. It's just so overwhelming and life changing, to be honest. Now, of course, you're on board with Cloud9 and the stream is going to be churning out, I'm sure, business as usual. So with a new Call of Duty title on the line in Modern Warfare, the remake of it, surely you have some opinions. How do you, uh, I guess, feel or what's your take uh, on that game, which is on the horizon? It looks amazing, honestly. When I was watching it on stream, uh, it's just it looks really different compared to other Call of Duties, and I think that's what stands out to me because it does look like a challenge, and I just want to stand out as much as I can. When I was looking at the guns, they all look great, and then the sniping, well, it just it looked amazing, and it does look quite hard, but that's what draws me in more. I just want to play it right now to be honest just to see how it is but there is the leaning aspect that's in there that i'm not too keen on but i feel like i will get used to it but overall it just looks amazing it's gonna be a new touch a bit more like PUBG. I you know a lot of call of duty players yeah. probably aren't going to be used to that either so it'll be interesting to see how everyone adapts <laughs> well yeah. interesting to see if you two maybe team mm-hmm. up but so we wanted to get your impressions also on the 2v2 gunfight mode that was shown last week uh is this a gun game type that you think that you would enjoy playing Oh yeah, definitely. It looks so intense and so enjoyable to do. Like I even want to play it against viewers. I think it'd be a great way for them to gain points within that month if they can defeat me. So it's kind of like a challenge, just get everyone involved. As I said, I love interacting with them. So this game mode is just perfect. That's going to be coming. (laughs) Now the Call of Duty World League is taking a page from the Overwatch League and will actually be changing to a city-based franchise model. Does this excite you as a Call of Duty fan? Is there some way that you want to be involved in it? Yeah, it does excite me, to be honest. Like, I'm very intrigued to how it's going to work out and unfold. And especially, I want to see what type of city-based teams there's going to be. Like, I really do hope there is going to be a London one because if you didn't see the CWL London, our crowds are just mind-blowing. Like, they are so good when they're cheering on the team. So I'm really, like, interested to see what's going to happen. And it did so well for Overwatch, so... I wonder what it's going to do for Call of Duty. Yeah, great banter, British crowds, London always. Crowd. Well, I'm, yes. just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Some uh, of the clips from that was really C9 fun. may have a London presence in other games, so maybe there's potential there. But, uh, you know, it's something to keep an eye on. There was recently, though, uh, an all-female Counter-Strike event at DreamHack Valencia. I just kind of want to get your take on, on whether you'd like the idea of sort of all-female leagues or teams or events. Yeah, I definitely think there should be an all-female events a bit more because that will encourage other girls to come out their shell a bit and do what they love in a more professional way. So it's nothing bad about it. It's all good. So the more, the better, really. And competition is fun. Everyone loves it. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Creating a space uh, for, like you said, for those competitors to step forward can only sound like a good thing to me. Opportunities. Opportunities. Yeah, exactly. 
And I think the fans uh, also really like engaging that. But we also have uh, some fan questions. So before we let you go, we want to drop yes. a few of them your way. Kyle first asks, uh, what's your favorite Xbox or PlayStation game that isn't Call of Duty? Oh, this is a tricky one. There's two. I used to love Skate Free. Oh, that was just... yeah. oh wow. <laughs> was not expecting that. Was yeah. it, dude? <laughs> uh, honestly, I can't remember what the game mode was, but when you're on the skateboard and you got to jump off and just, you know, you break your bones and stuff all like that, that, that was just really fun. And then the other one is Left 4 Dead 2. I used to play that so much when I came back from school and everything with, like, my friends, so... They're definitely the two up there. <laughs> <laughs> great choice, great choice. Uh, the last one, and I guess uh, this one that was asked, we don't know who, but it's anonymously, uh, <laughs> is English food as bad as everyone makes it out to be? Are we really asking this? It's a fact, uh, isn't it? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say so. I'm a big like food person. I love food, so I have been quite a lot of places. But when I did go to America for the first time, I can say I love your food a bit more. Like Chick-fil-A. My favorite. Yeah, listen, listen, <laughs> though, listen, Ems. Their bacon sucks here, mate. We have the real bacon in our Commonwealth countries. We have like the actual bacon. Theirs is like this thin and just snaps off when you pick it off the plate. How is this allowed? Yeah, no, I, I remember when I did have the bacon for the first time, I was a bit confused because our one's different. I do yeah. prefer our ones, but, you know. You miss me with that crispy stuff, fam. I ain't about it. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. you I love like bacon. Crispy bacon. No, what? It's not, that's not right. What, do, you want, do you want a crispy filet mignon? Just like it crumbles on your plate? It's meat, fam. Well, part, part of bacon it's is its jerky. versatility. All right. It can what? just go in all different kinds of things, crispy, smooth, yeah. whatever you want. What, in no a furnace? crispy bacon? Okay, guys, we're getting, we're getting way too often. All right, we'll talk about it after. thank you so much for joining us. This is not Click Debate. We appreciate you taking a break from streaming a chat with us. Uh, you can check out Cloud9M's stream on Twitch and all our highlights on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. We know it's late. Thank there. you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, well, shout out to all the new Fortnite team members of Cloud9, and also a uh, shout out to this week's Puma gift card winner. So congratulations, Oreo3295. Congrats, and tune in next week for another chance to win for everyone else who didn't get it. And if he's still in the chat, 
Type away who you voted for. Yeah. Was it me or Frodo? And we need to know to settle this. Also, you scroll up shout out to Ems. She's in the chat as well. Thanks for joining us earlier on. Yeah, what up, Ems? Right, everyone, uh, say hello. And if you haven't checked her out, go follow her. Yeah. So you saw some of her sick clips. Those were nasty Spicy. dome shots. Mm -hmm. All right, so we promised that we'd look at uh, my old filter. <laughs> now, I'm not exactly sure how reflective it is, <laughs> but... <laughs> Apparently, this is what I'm going to look like Ooh. in 60 years. <laughs> yeah, baby. It'll be a pretty rough transition. I'm going to look like this, how I look right now, for about you know 30 years, but then it's going to be a hard drop off, apparently. you got a buff neck, though. Do I? Isn't that it, right? Like, yeah, it's you like, like, see like a board. Flabby to yeah. me, it's like but... steel cables in your neck, you know what I mean? Yeah, but we also have some bonus old pictures as well, given that we're missing one Monte Cristo, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there this we go. is what Monty will look like with the face app is, swap. Isn't that what he looks like all the time already? This is actually like a live shot of him right, right. now in Tahoe. It's kind of like the same amount of... Uh, the Mon Monty, are you there? Are you, are you with us, Monty? Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, no. He's away from technology right now. I'm going to go down and join him tomorrow and go jet skiing. Baby! It's happening. All right, all right. Well, we're going to check with the chat. Uh, they want me to say mech and salve for the Brazilian fans. So there you go. I'm your uh, Monty. Right, salve Fox. from uh, all of us. <laughs> and at number four, it's our countdown within a countdown. It's time for the best clips, a.k.a. Stream of the Crop. This is the best of the best clips in all of esports within the past week that we saw. This is our stream of the crop. At number four, we've got a nice little 4K from the stage three champion, Shanghai Dragons. Check out Ding, rain justice from above on the San Francisco Shock. You like that, Crumbs? You like I some Fara gameplay? I love me some Fara gameplay. I mean, when you get a rocket barrage with a Mercy right behind you, you know that the pain train is coming. He rains down hell from Just vomiting damage. He's sick. The best fire in the world, I'd say, but great setup with the EMP prior. Just very nice and clean sweep across. At number three, this one might be even better though, Cloud9 PUBG team member K Mind goes out of his mind, taking out 29 online plebeians in a single round. Uh, how many people are in that lobby? I think it's like 50 only, right? You, you got past the lobby. Mm. Look at this guy leaning like crazy. You he, could get out there and hang out with Lyric and join the Lean Boys. Dude. About to get in the building. Oh my god. All 29 kills are going to be featured in this. I mean, it is uh, the best game of all time. Yeah, I'd love, to know what the, I'd love to know what the records are in PUBG for like the amount of kills in one single lobby. This is, uh... You can see that he, he hasn't even lost much health, right? Like, he's still just finding everyone and they can't see him. Yeah, and there's a lot of long range assault rifle kills too, which requires really precise control. Honestly, and with the, the recoil kickback uh, in this game is actually quite nasty. I'm impressed. Long clip, but I'll tell you what, it was Ooh. worth watching it. This guy should go pro one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Next up, despite Team Liquid eliminating Cloud9, we had to show you this ace Liquid's NAF had in the finals over FaZe Clan. Timing is known for these oh! moments. USP through this. Oh, it's oh. pistol round. Yeah. Didn't see anybody. Didn't see him. Just spamming it. Smoke. I've never seen anything like it. Round He's probably seen something. Side. He's probably <laughs> seen <laughs> a nice pistol round or two. He's gonna pick up an wow. in the round. Sick round though. That, that level when Anders just goes mental. On top of that, that was the debut of the team. Why do you do that? You can't see anything. Well, yeah, that, well, Team Liquid, best in the world oh, right now. Yeah. You know, best best in the world, so no surprise there. NAF also looked like a different well, player in this roster. At number one, you already know what it is, and we had to show you the last series of Cloud9's LCS comeback against none other than TSM. That was the Barrett Peak Crumbs. It's Always Ben Scarin. When it comes to the Baron, you know Sven Scarin is going to deliver. And this was with Kumo in the top one, which is an academy player, not even their main player. Oh, Get that dunked. last Aatrox. This is why Baron fights are always so exciting in League of Legends, because you never know how it swings the momentum either way. Well, that's not the exciting part for the player, where you're just hoping that you don't throw the game. <laughs> yeah, like, like, please. This is how you throw away <laughs> every time you throw <laughs> the game. The next LCS jungle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I haven't looked into the numbers, but I think it was a meme, and it wasn't justified, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for this week's stream of The Crop. It's back to our doppelgangers on the couch. Some really fun clips there. Uh, 
especially that last one there. Crumbs, uh, for the viewers that don't know League that well, can you put a little bit more context in that comeback from Cloud9? Yeah, so TSM has been the reigning organization for maybe the first six, six years of League of Legends alongside Cloud9. So they've always battled back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so this time around, TSM has been struggling, and so they always get a big lead against Cloud9. Yeah, Cloud9 no, finds <laughs> a way to bring it back. So really, it's like two titans, and one just always seems to have the ability of just like, nah, we'll take the win now. We'll mm. take the win now. So it just further strengthens Cloud9 as a top-tier organization in North America, and TSM is one that, well, they're good, just not as good as C9. Gotcha. Is it, is it much of a debate, you think, the back and forth between... Oh, no, and not right now. Right gotcha. now, not, not like absolutely. the crispy bacon versus not crispy bacon debate. That's that not even a close debate. Yeah, this I mean, is... Uh, He's, I first thought that he was saying he liked Chrissy Bacon. I was agreeing with him, and we were all in agreement. Yeah. And then it turns out this guy doesn't like. Nah, he, he just reneged when he realizes that the other like right. an A guy it's pork was chop. About He'd it. rather have pork it's not, chop. It's not. It's not. It's different. No, no, no. See that? See that? There's actually like proper bits of bacon there. That's right? raw bacon. So in Duh, Korea, you gotta cook it first. In South Korea. <laughs> Is that how you eat things? You in eat Australia? a lot of it, right? Like in, in Korea, in the K barbecue, you get the big strip, and it's yeah. fat, and it's not that crispy. But it still sucks. It's better than like crispy bacon. <laughs> just, is where it's just at, have man. like just have like chips or something with your with your breakfast if you want that that, that crispy crunch, man. Like these are proper bits of bacon, man. They're not messing about. Like you guys, I feel like you guys the lose so much from it. Play, I, see, that explains everything. We're gonna be can at show, this. Can you show this picture? What is it? I mean, that's just that's just stylized. Yeah, there it is. Ah, that's okay. where he's from. Australia, he, baby. Australia. Made out of bacon. We have. Look, okay, so come on. Commonwealth people in the chat, back me up here. Canadians also have good bacon as well. Let's, Love let's, crispy, crispy let's, bacon. In Canada, want bacon, bacon. Or Canadian bacon is actually ham. It's not even bacon. Who doesn't like crispy bacon feels weird, man. Feels weird, man. Hey, <laughs> you're for breakfast. <laughs> you're the weird champ, man. You might as well brush your teeth veggie, with right. charcoal. <laughs> We've yeah, lost yeah. the argument already. Yeah, you up in the chat. Yeah, you. There's one, there's one talk about Fatty bacon champ, is me. the best. You got it. Imperial Rebel backs you up. <laughs> one person in the chat. Imperial Rebel. All right, Such well, at long opinions. last, we're ready for League of Legends COD9 Pro Sneaky. So in at number three is Cloud Connections presented by AT&T. Three. This is Cloud Connections presented by AT&T. And you can't have a Cloud9 show without having this guy on it. League of Legends Pro Sneaky is here to carry us. How are you going, mate? I'm good. Hey. Hey, great to have you with us, bro. I'm, I'm digging these single. Where can I get one of those? Oh, actually, I sell them on the Cloud9 store. Nice. Let me get on that one. Hey, last Saturday, you played in the longest uh, match of this uh, summer split, and you came up, unfortunately, a little bit short against Echo Fox, a team who are at the bottom of the league currently. Uh, but you had a great weekend just before that. So what was your analysis of what happened in that game? Um, it was uh, the stupid cat, honestly. <laughs> you what? <laughs> I don't know if you know Yumi. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, she just sits it vulnerable on someone, and she, at the end of the game, had like 54k healing, and oh my God. the highest damage person was 44k, and that was Kubo's Jace. That sounds super balanced, though. Niski's yeah. Vagar that had 1200 AP did only 3000 more damage than the Yumi support. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's quite insane. Like, every piece of poke felt like it did nothing. It's like, we're just getting out poked. It's like, while well, we're hitting everything, they're just healing it all instantly. So, yeah, she's actually an insane champion. And I mean, we were trying to give her up and see if we could win, but. So, well, I was almost testing case. yourself to see if you could handle it under those. You're in the hyperbolic time chamber in the LCS <laughs> yeah. Summer Split. Yeah, maybe not the best time to <laughs> test, <laughs> but we did. Fair enough. Yeah, well, I mean, it seemed pretty successful. Uh, Sunday, you faced your old rivals, TSM, and had a huge comeback against them. What is it about this old, longtime rivalry that brings out the best in you and in Cloud9? Um, I mean, I think it's usually just how good both teams are at the time. Like, every single time we face them, we're both really similar levels of strength, and we fight them, and... Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. Like the we won this time, last time we lost. Um, yeah. So next time it's their turn games. to win. Nah, hopefully not. <laughs> no, like uh, the playoffs, uh, spring split, we lost three two, but we beat them twice actually. We beat them in summer last year, three uh, two, and then we beat them in the gauntlet three zero. So we destroyed them, and then they come back. It's just it's always back and forth. You guys usually win when it counts, but this next weekend you've got CLG and the Hundred Thieves. How do you avoid doing the same thing that happened against Echo Fox? Because these are two very winnable games for you guys. You guys are almost first place. 
Yeah, uh, I think a lot of it's just figuring out what we want to play because there's a lot of, you know, X factors that kind of came in, like Kiana, new champion. Oh, yeah. She seems really broken, but we don't know how broken because she can flash ult and literally insta kill anyone, but it's like, are there counters? Well, just give it Echo Fox and play them and see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be good. I mean, you've, you've played for a very long time. If you think about how esports careers work, you definitely have one of the longer ones, especially in League of Legends now. And you're grinding all the time. I mean, how do you sort of fight off that fatigue from just, you know, working on your craft for so long? Um, I've talked about it a decent bit uh, sometimes. I think it's mainly just scheduling yourself to not play too much. Like, every time I go home after scrims, I won't touch League for like two hours or so. And if I do that, then I have time for other stuff, get my mind off it, freshen myself up, and make myself never bored of League. Because if you play too much of it, you play it all the time, you just get frustrated, things are just more and more annoying sure. that keep happening to you, and then you're just like, I don't want to play this game. And then you go into scrims, and like you get more annoyed. So it's just a chain reaction, I think, from... You have to come up for air every now and then. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse and worse. Yeah, I know that's spiral. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, a lot of the fans, they've been really rallying behind, obviously, Cloud9 in general. And they've also been uh, really particularly fond of a player that's on the come up of Jukes. He was on the show last week. Do you have any thoughts on him as a player? Yeah, uh, I got to play with him a decent bit, actually. Um, after I was sick from Rift Rivals, uh, they were using some of the other people like Grayson and Keith in scrims because, you know, I was sick. Right. Couldn't play as much. Um, and I got to play with Juke some. So I got to see his personality. He's really fun. He's, He's very charismatic. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> sometimes like I'll scream in game just to, you know, mess with people because I like that. And then, he, like, Wait, what? most people don't join, but Jukes is joining in. He's like, oh, he's yeah. screaming with you. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome, man. He's the guy that's in the prison cell saying, that was awesome. <laughs> that's a Brazilian hype. It is, it is. Well, speaking of hype, you are nominated for Esports Cosplayer of the Year. We don't know how many have been nominated, but you are at the forefront. How's that feel? You've made a craft in esports, uh, not just as a player, but as your own hobby. That's true. Uh, I, think, I think there was like 10 contestants or something. I saw the list, but... I'll vote for you. Are there really? Yeah, we'd vote for you. <laughs> Come on. We know only you speak don't... here. Jess Kinney, who is she even, <laughs> really? And look, look at all these other people. No, there's only one true god of cosplay. This one got me... Uh, I think we, this one got me last week, I think. That was uh, great. I mean, yeah, look, you're, look, you're, on, you're nominated, though, across a, a different category than what your Ooh, main vocation is. You don't so. look like that right now. How? Uh, that's true. Is that... You know, I don't think I want to write it. <laughs> well, focused, I'll please. let that one go to the keeper. So we, we cloud sourced uh, some fan questions to ask you. So BF Zombie Potato asks, how does it feel, Sneaky, to constantly have to compete to be the most attractive C9 player on the team <laughs> with Zazel looking devilishly handsome recently? Uh, how do you plan to keep up the number one spot? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to battle the beard, honestly. Maybe I'll have to cut it into sleep. How do you counter the beard, right? You can't just like match it necessarily. Well, you maybe don't have the time. You know, need some time to build up. I don't know. I've, your... I've tried actually. I grew it out for like two and a half months, and I, I couldn't get anything. Yep, I feel you're right there. I feel this you is, really hard. Yeah. This, guy, this guy, yeah. he goes yeah. away for two days and he comes back looking yeah. like a Sherpa. I'm like, I don't know how he's managed to do that. Uh, well, uh, we have another question here. I think it was even flash on the screen. Uh, Robotomly asks, will you be able to give us a hint for your next cosplay? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, it's a maid. Okay. I've done some of those, but it's not from League. Ah, well. uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. A little teaser. That's all we get. I guess uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be okay with that That's one, I think. enough for our imagination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really not. <laughs> I've, had a lot, I've had a lot to stimulate my imagination already on this segment. The show's really just kicking off. Thank you very much for sitting down with us, man. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. You're on every uh, digital platform, uh, so where can people find you? You know... Like you just said, mm -hmm. most digital platforms. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I call them social media, but... That's, you, that, know. you know what? I would have said that too <laughs> if I hadn't read the teleprompter. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's Twitter, you know, at Sneaky, uh, Twitch, C9 Sneaky. You know, I actually have a Facebook, but I haven't used it in a very long time. Any boomers use it, it's fine. Yeah. What about <laughs> Patreon? You on Patreon? Yep, yep. C9 how many, Sneaky there. How many Patreon uh, pledgers do you have? I think 1,200. Ooh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Killing on the Patreons. We'd love to see. So you can follow Sneaky over there. And Sneaky fans, don't go anywhere. He's not done yet. He'll be back for our last segment of One for the Road to critique some of our past cosplay attempts. Back to us, though, on the couch. Grubbs, would you say that Sneaky is one of the top 10 most popular league players in the whole world? If you took out part China, yes. 100%. Well, now it's time to see what's coming up in the world of Cloud9. At number two, it's cloud coverage. Coming up this week, the C9 Apex Legends players continue their quest in the Face It Pro Series. Sneaky and the LCS team are set to take on 100 Thieves and CLG to hopefully reclaim their number one spot in the standings. We also have Cloud9 Academy taking on three teams this week. The C9 Academy squad is currently sitting comfortably at first with an 11-2 record. Crumbs, what makes this roster so good? This roster is nutty. By far the best Academy team we've had for consistently year after year. And I think what makes it so good is the coaching staff, actually, because the main team also works with the Academy team. The coaches share information. They go back and forth. They even let the players on the Academy play LCS every once in a while. So it's a big, big training regimen between everybody that makes the Academy team. So what is a rank with like that? You know, the Renegades? Oh, dude, squad. no, they are, they're better. They're way better, yeah. way better. Not even <laughs> close. Like, see, we were just trying to hit a mark, right? We were trying to just qualify and be yeah. that good. They're actually trying to create careers for people and be be a legitimate place for anybody to get out of high school, get out of college, and go ah, compete. So they're actually a much more established. Riot team, told him what know. to say if I bring up Renegades. <laughs> I'll see you. Monty oh, I'll you, tell right? you a lot about the Renegades. <laughs> <laughs> Last, all right, right, right. Well, I want someone in chat is really asking a good question. Real Yoshi Game says, how do you think Cloud9 always gets great players? How do I think they always get great players? So, I think that the reason they get great players is because their organization propagates it. They've already gotten to the point where if you are a younger player, you know that Cloud9 is the organization to grow your talents because they've already done it. So they don't even need to do the work anymore because that's what the reputation has. So the rep their reputation precedes themselves so well that they don't even need to do much scouting. The players will come to them. So it's like an Ivy League school Exactly. Reputation. No, they are. Just they already have, there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's okay, like Cloud. It. It makes sense. Cloud9. Well, last week, Duke said that they'd beat the C9 LCS team one in four games. How many other LCS teams do you think the C9 Academy team could beat? So they could beat FlyQuest, Echo Fox, Clutch Gaming, 100 Thieves. Oh, uh, Wow, <laughs> so like half of LCS. Four? Uh, and maybe maybe Optic, maybe a few okay. more, so at least half. They, okay, they wow. would definitely beat at least half. Because remember, Cloud9 is a top three right now. They were tied for first, so they can beat quite a few. Do they have beat Echo Fox? Oh yeah, dude, Echo Fox <laughs> is last. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. The PUBG GLL Grand Slam is also this weekend in Stockholm, Sweden, where Cloud9 and four other American teams will take on the rest of the world. Frodan, where does this event fall in the grand scheme of PUBG events and will Europe continue to dominate the scene? Yeah, it's a pretty big deal because historically Europe's been doing very well in a lot of PUBG esports competitions. A lot of my friends on the NA side though, I believe that their time is really coming. And look how much money is on the line, $300,000. The players have been practicing nonstop. I haven't even been able to get to chat with my friends because they've been practicing and scrimming so much. So uh, all the players are taking it very seriously. And also I think uh, the Cloud9 squad in particular with Pro Coffee, kind of leading, the mind, uh, leading it with K-Mind. I think those guys are going to slay like crazy. Uh, they did super well in the uh, the NPL, and I'm really expecting them to come out swinging this weekend. Really something worth checking out if you wanted to get into PUBG Esports and check it out, because C9's leading the way there as well. But now it's the moment you have been all been waiting for. Sneaky will be lending his cosplaying expertise as he ranks our terrible outfits. Enjoy this one. This is One for the Road. We are joined by League of Legends LCS Pro Sneaky, and as you probably know, Zach is masterful at cosplaying, so we thought we'd let the expert rate some of our past cosplay and costume work. He'll be giving us a score of one to five Sneakies, a highly regarded rating in the cosplay <laughs> community. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, so let's start things off with Uber here. First up, we have your basic cosplay Ooh. outfit. Basic. How's that basic? I'm a Chad. You look, look at like me. A level one warrior. That's why it's basic. Do you know what character you're supposed to be? Or is it just armor? I'm your daddy. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. So Sneaky, at a scale of one to five Sneakies, what are we giving Uber's cosplay here? Ah, he's got a sword. The real sword. Pads. There's not 
too much Combat had. <laughs> yeah, it's not too much effort. Oh. I'll, I'll give it a three. Oh, yeah. Three. Oh, three. three. All right. It's 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 cool. average. I think it looks cool. The background's cool, too. Honestly. Three sneakies. All right. Oh, three <laughs> sneakies. Production is on point. Next, we have what we call the Angry Hatter. Oh, that's you again. Oh, dear. Oh, oh don't find me $1,000 Overwatch League, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least give that one Monty. <laughs> mm. Wow, I look bold. Look at that five head. What? Do you know where's the character from? Is it just, is it Alice? I think, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to be that Mad Hatter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give it uh, another three. Really? I'm that same, all right. Same yeah. Damn, damn. Three Come sneakies. Three me. out of five sneakies. Mm -hmm. All right, pretty solid score. We'll see if Crumbs can beat it. We have Profit Crumbs. Uh, what do you think about your fellow LCS oh member here? Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a four, that's a four. Yeah. <laughs> is it really okay. cosplay, no. though? This is just like your character pretty much. on the just show, right? Note that the beard is always never on the actual <laughs> face. It's always <laughs> on the chin. Because you're showing off that you have a, a beard in addition. Yeah. Above or below. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I suppose it's time Time for me to face the music. Oh, uh, here's the first the flex. one that oh. I did oh. for Hearthstone. Oh. This is me as a mad scientist. That's pretty good. Well, which mad scientist is it? It's uh, Dr. Boom's mad scientist because it was a laboratory and Where are the bombs? in the Nether Storms. Well, he has two bombs that come out. It's true. Hmm. So I'm missing the bombs. Yeah. So I can't get a perfect five. I do like the show bombs. Yeah, I like I like the <laughs> goggles. Is, it, is there something on your back? Like a cord? Um, no, cool? it was the background. It was like a bunch of wires and old school like okay. measuring equipment and whatnot. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll give it a three. Okay. That's nice. Not bad. All right, this next one, me, is as a StarCraft Protoss probe. <laughs> a a probe? probe? Whoa. Oh, oh, my. My. <laughs> that's, that's, a five. that's a five. That's a five. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been blessed by the five sneaky rating. We'll take it. I think we should just stop there. Wow. We if we, if I knew that we could actually have our shirt, let's cosplay things. I would have gone into my OnlyFans and taken some stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, how, how'd you see. get that? All right. Well, apparently, <laughs> oh, how did I get the probe yeah. outfit? It was, uh, it was a publicity stunt. I was actually at DreamHack from like five years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, before your time, Sneaky. I know you're still kind of new and, and, and the hot thing rising up. <laughs> it worked, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, well, we're gonna cover and censor that real quick. And then the last one, <laughs> apparently, I hope is five Sneakies. This is me as Gul'dan. Oh, is, you? is that you? It is me. Wow. But the cheekbones are peaking, brother. Yeah. I feel like there had to be a better picture. I think so they're, too. They're adjusting it here. Well, I even have like a weapon and whatnot because mm -hmm. it was holding like a staff and there was like all these cool things. That's that's got to be a five as well. He's really got to flex on us like that, up. Yeah, no, yeah. he he's actually a cosplayer. Yeah. yeah, like I wish I could see the whole thing. But yeah. didn't know about the probe because I, I actually love Gul'dan. He's Woo! a cool character. Five sneakies. That's a double back to back five sneaky the two times. <laughs> I mean, one is like you, you can't know, top that. I, mean, I can't. One, the probe had me to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough. It was like three hours of makeup. It was also like 105 degrees at San Diego Comic Con, and that was the last time I cosplayed. I hope it was worth it, Dan. It was worth it for the clout, but uh, <laughs> come on, dude. At the there's time, no way you're not doing a probe costume again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, we actually have a bonus one for our honored host that's not here real quick. What do you think of our friend Monte Cristo? Oh, <sighs> the dark. This is apparently called E. Monty. <laughs> oh, it's just himself. Yeah, so exactly. But he basically made a deal with the thing with his fans. If they if they purchased or if they fundraised the outfit for him, he'd go as E. Monty for the talent takedown. Uh, and then, yeah, he got carried uh, against my team wearing this. <laughs> hmm. You lost again? Yeah, I lose every one of them, man. What do you guys think? Let's have a let's have a crack. Okay, ah, so look, he's, right. look, he's committed with the eyeshadow. Like I kind of dig that, right? And he's had something done with his hair, but I bet you that's like that new age paste that just like kind of makes your hair look like it's dyed. Uh -huh. Can I get a confirmation here? Yeah, uh, man, it was. That's what it is, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, I like the jacket, though. I'm digging it. He looks like uh, that band, that one of those emo bands. Right, Gerard White, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be like the guy from My Chemical Romance. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. for fidelity so I, to the original, right. so I kind of like it. I'll give it a it. solid four out of yeah. five. I'll give it a four. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's, All right, it's sneaky again. It's been decided. Four out of five. Good job, Monte Cristo, four being pieces. able to still show up the rest of your fellow hosts in Crumbs <laughs> still got and carried. in uh, Uber, apparently. And that's it for One for the Road. Make sure to follow Sneaky on Twitter, Instagram, and check out his Twitch stream. Thank you for critiquing our cosplay, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you.
All right, well, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that cosplay. How did I lose to Monty? Dude, I think you dropped the ball in your Renaissance Fair keeping the eye watch on. Oh, uh, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, I wasn't even trying to cosplay. I'm like, I was at a Ren Fair. I'm like, I'm buying a sword. And I did. And then I put this other thing on. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm going to take a photo. I wasn't even trying. Like, you actually tried the <laughs> no, cosplay? Like, like, yeah, it felt like you didn't fully even commit. Try. No, Monty put <laughs> I like, was the still wearing my, on. Yeah, yeah, he had true. the bondage collar. He had yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, I was, still, I was still wearing my Ultra Boost in that. So it's, it's, uh, it's fine, you know. Get, I need to get some nice Pumas uh, for the next one. You know? I mean, I want to be the Puma warrior. Hook me up. out. All right, well, let's check in with chat one last time and see what they thought about cosplay. Looks like <laughs> Monty's joined the Black Parade. Oh, well. Yep, All they right. got it. They pretty much got it straight away, so yeah. they were able to pick it up. Uh, I, I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. It was like one of them obscure memes, but he pulled it off really well and he even played the, like, the game on stage in that app. He was in so. character in some weird way? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know. He just walked down the aisle. Like arm. he wasn't additionally emo. No, I think it was. Just, he even had like these snake bite things on yeah. his, like the fake uh, piercing. Oh, I thought people stuff. said that he was acting in character when he was well, like He, he kind of always is like that. <laughs> this is kind of his Sure, demon. sure, that's yeah. right. All right, well, uh, that's it for the show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check us out next week here on Cloud9's Twitch channel at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's the nines at nine, easy to remember. And you'll always want to watch because Cloud9 will be releasing its summer merch line. And there might be a little giveaway and possibly a discount. That sneaky tank top. Don't hold us to it, though. And for that and all things Cloud9, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Frodan. It's Uber. It's Crumbs. Thanks for watching, and good night. <laughs>